incident occurred at Walmart. Uh, I was in school one day, and I was called up to the probation officer's office in the school, and there was a police officer there waiting for me. And he handcuffed me and led me out of the school and uh, put me in the squad car and drove me up to PA Child Care in Pittston. Uh, since it was a Friday, I had to wait over the weekend to go in front of Judge Chevarella. So I spent three days in PA child care, thinking the entire time that I, I screwed up, but I, would, I was just going to get probation at the worst. And um, I was then sentenced in a 90-second hearing. I was sentenced to Camp Adams for a minimum of 90 days. And I was never offered a lawyer, never explained my rights to a lawyer or what benefits it would have. Uh, I was just sent away to Camp Adams for at least 90 days, and I spent uh, the better part of four and a half months there. <clears throat> and tell us about the judge, Mark Chivarella, who sent you there, and your reaction when you heard that he pled guilty. Um, shock, I guess. I, I mean, it was expected that he was going to plead guilty for, for this last week. But uh, when all of this first started coming up, it, it was just absolute shock, because I had thought that I had just gotten a raw deal, that, um, you know, maybe possibly he was in a bad mood that day or something. I, I had never thought that the scope and the scale of, of, this, entire, uh, of this entire investigation and what has come of it. How old were you when you went to jail? I was 18 at the time. Jamie, how did going to jail for almost a year after your fight with your friend, how did that affect your life? It affected me dramatically. I mean, you know, you think it wouldn't, but it really has. I mean, I've lost friends over this. People looked at me different when I came out, thought I was a bad person because I was gone for so long. Um, my family started splitting up. and. Not in my personal opinion, I think it's because I was away and got locked up and was, I thought, getting, you know, punished for what I had did, which I don't think I should have. And I was just, I'm still struggling in school because the schooling system in facilities like these places are just horrible. It's, everybody gets put in the same level and it's just horrible. I'm still struggling. I'm, I'm graduating this year and Math is still not my favorite subject. I was like an A-B student before I went, and now I'm just struggling with B's and C's. You began cutting yourself in jail? Yes. Why do you think you started doing that? Honestly, I never even, like I was never, I didn't even know what it was until I was sent to Vision Quest. And I was never depressed. I was never put on meds before. I went there and they just started putting meds on me put, and I didn't even know what they were. They said if I didn't take them, I wasn't following my program. So in my opinion, I think that it was the meds at the time. I, I mean, I was never medicated in my life nor diagnosed with depression and that's what I believe happened. Mm. You were sent to the hospital three times during yeah. that almost year. Yeah, Chambersburg Hospital. Bob Schwartz, the plan now. and. How much representation do young people have in Pennsylvania? Well, in, in most Pennsylvania counties, uh, almost all kids have a lawyer all the time. Pennsylvania law requires uh, all youth to have a lawyer at the time of uh, the first hearing before a detention uh, officer to a judge at every uh, su subsequent hearing. Uh, Pennsylvania has granted kids, in many ways, more rights to lawyers than many states. On the other hand, in Luzerne County, that was a right that was largely ignored. Uh, lawyers doing their job would get in the way of this railroad from the bar of the court to Pennsylvania child care and other placements that was taking place in Luzerne County at the time. Uh, one of the things that we hope that will come out of this is that it will be much harder for any youth to appear before any judge without a lawyer in the state. Uh, meanwhile, there are several uh, proceedings that are happening at the same time. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court has finally agreed to hear the case. 
Uh, they took the case after the U.S. attorney acted at the end of January. Uh, and there will now be an examination of all 5,000 or so cases that took place in Luzerne County from 2003 forward. Uh, there are also going to be multiple civil rights actions in federal court uh, in Scranton uh, going after not only the judges, but others who conspired with them to hurt kids like Jamie and Kurt. Uh, what happened to them should never happen to a child in the United States of America. And the role of the police and the schools, very briefly in this, Bob Schwartz? Well, uh, the police uh, were ordered to make an arrest. You know, uh, it really uh, varies, you know, in, in so many ways. Uh, they were obviously told in Kurt's case to bring him to court because there was a court warrant issued because he had failed to appear for a hearing that he didn't know about. Uh, they might have acted differently, but certainly the probation department and the court should have acted differently. Uh, the probation department was intimidated by the judges. They are court employees. And one of the things that the uh, information of the U.S. attorney claims is that Judge Chivarella and Judge Conahan had uh, probation officers change their recommendations, ordered them to change their recommendations in order to make sure that they had enough kids to fill slots at these child care facilities. And the child care facilities themselves? Uh, they well, paid the bribes. They paid, and uh, the federal proceedings will uh, bring bring to uh, to light what their role actually was. Right now, they have not been charged criminally, but they are inevitably a defendant in every civil rights proceeding. So we're talking about five thousand kids, like Jamie, um, like Kurt. How much jail time do these judges face? Uh, they've pled. Uh, and are expecting uh, to get 87 months in uh, federal prison. Uh, that's a little more than seven years if the judge accepts the plea bargain. Mm. Jamie, how do you feel about that? I'm, it just makes me really question other authority figures and people that we're supposed to look up to and trust. I mean, Chivarel has been a judge <coughs> for a long time, from what I know, and he, a well-respected one is what I thought, and I obviously not. It just really makes me question and not trust other people. I mean, if someone like Judge Chivarella can do this, then it makes me believe that anyone can betray the law. And I don't know. And Kurt, your final comment. Um, well, basically, I just want to say that uh, finally there's there's some sort of closure for me at least coming from the uh, the lawsuits from the juvenile law center. There's at least a little bit of closure for me, and I hope that's the same <coughs> case for everyone who's involved. Well, Kurt Kruger and Jamie Quinn, thanks so much for being with us, and Bob Schwartz as well. Um, I want to turn now to the commentary that alerted us to the story of Mumia Abu-Jamal. He's been on Pennsylvania's death row for more than 25 years. With judges like these. In Pennsylvania's Luzerne County, there are nine judges of the Court of Common Pleas. Two of them just pleaded guilty to a conspiracy to convict and sentence juveniles to a private prison so that they could get kickbacks from the prison's builders and owners. According to published accounts, Judge Mark A. Chiavarella and Senior Judge Michael T. Conahan sent hundreds of boys and girls to the private facility and pocketed some $2.5 in kickbacks. This was accomplished not merely because of the venal greed of the judges, but because virtually none of the children were provided with legal representation. When the Philadelphia-based Juvenile Law Center filed a petition in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court calling the county's practice of adjudicating and sentencing some 250 kids to jail without legal representation unconstitutional, the state's highest court denied the petition on January 8th. A month later, they changed their minds, vacating the denial. What transpired in the interim? Well, for one thing, the two judges pleaded guilty to federal charges of wire service fraud. Hundreds of children get socked into jail after clearly unconstitutional proceedings with no legal representation, and the state Supreme Court doesn't even raise an eyebrow. The media reports on this outrage and the Pennsylvania Supreme Court expresses a little interest. This is the nature of judging these days, when even kids are expendable fodder for the prison industrial complex.
Luzerne County is the state's 10th largest county, with just over 300,000 souls. At least 22% of their judges have admitted being corrupt in the sordid business of selling the freedom of poor children for profit. From death row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. And we thank the Prison Radio Project in San Francisco and Noel Hanrahan. This is 